It's been a while since I've done a sit down video, but as you can see here, I have a selection of grips, which I'm going to introduce to you and I'll show you why you need some of these tools as well as some more specialist grips. Accessories. I'll also tell you why you might need a plier. So you often go to your pro shops, which could be badminton or tennis or squash racket shops, and they often have a huge selection of grips. But actually, for me, it only comes down to three different types. And well, four if you add in the accessories. So here I'm going to show you the three types and four that I have on here and I'm going to demonstrate some of them to you so you know what you're looking for. So here we have normally the wraps or wraps. So they are generally super thin, they're quite tacky, some of them have very different feels. Um, they're also relatively cheaper, so they tend to be the cheapest options and they come in different sizes. So for example here I have some of the single ones and they also look like these. And also, some of them come in multi-packs. So they come in threes or fives. Some of them I know come in 30, but quite a big roll. They generally go onto your racket handle, which I'll show you later on. It's either you can go on top of it on your standard grip, which you will take off, or not if you prefer them straight onto the wood, or nowadays, some of the plastic handles. If you prefer a more solid, tighter feeling where you can feel the ridges of your racket grips, be it on the wood, or now plastic handles, you can then actually put your grabs or wraps directly onto your racket. Ah, yes, I almost forgot. So for example, in tournaments, so I went to the French Open last year and I actually saw they have a special French International Open grip. So that's pretty cool. Next, we have the slightly thicker PU grips, which are generally thicker. <laughs> they tend to replace your complete racket grip. So if you have the grip that came with your racket originally, you can take them off and replace them with something like this, which feels a bit thicker, which might be more comfortable to some of us. They come in many different sizes. So some of them, they come standard alone like this. Others more premium, which comes in boxes like these. Ooh, looks very fancy. Oh wow, this thing feels premium. Wow, I really do like the feel of these. They feel incredible. Look at how sticky they are. They are, they are so good. So the difference between PU grips, which is the thicker version, and wraps or graps, is that PU grips will have fully taped undersides off their grips. So with graps or wraps, they are not lined with double-sided tape, so you're expected to have an original grip or a replacement grip that you're putting on, so the sticky side will directly grab onto the plastic or the grip underneath or the grip that you're replacing. So they have many different options. Some of them you have more tacky feel, some of them you have a drier feel, some of them you have ribbed, so meaning there's like a lining on the inside which you will actually feel when you wrap them on. And then the final type here, we have the towel grip. As it says, it's towel, it's mainly cotton. It comes in a single piece like this one here, or it comes in a full roll. So previously I used a towel grip extensively and now I have actually moved on to grab or wrap as I'm now. So as you can see, lots and lots of pro players uses the towel grip. A, it makes you look cool, I guess, in that sense. You know, all the super advanced pro players, like say legendary players, even like Lindan, Peter Gaeta, uh, they use towel grips. I just find the one single pack is much longer than what you need and so you often have to cut it off at the very end so it is quite wasteful so if you use towel grips quite a lot I would certainly recommend you getting rolls and towel grips they also differ in thickness so personally I prefer really thick ones and so I found Yonex ones are really good for me um, if you prefer thinner ones for example they have other brands you can have Victor ones or Ashaway ones that I found are really really good as well and they just come in different thickness and you just have to find the feel that you like so some of the tools and accessories you need so here we have a simple electrical tape um, we also have a pair of scissors obviously to cut off any excess tape or any excess grip and then a plier to remove a pin or pins later on. We also have additional accessories, which are, for example, here, a grip powder, which can be used with towel grip. But I have seen people putting grip powder on PU grips, which I don't generally recommend. They go very well with towel grips. For those of you who love rock climbing or bouldering, you will know what 
grit powder and chalk is and you can use them absolutely fine on towel grips. And here we have something a bit more special called the cushion wrap. So essentially it's a very thin layer of foam that goes directly on the handle before it is then covered or layered with PU grips or your wraps. I've not seen many people use it, but then it's getting more and more popular now. Also, if you want to keep your rackets protected from scratches, take a look at this premium racket protection tape I have on my store at ckyw.com forward slash shop. Grips, like your rackets and strings, are very personalized. So I generally prep my rackets for re-gripping. So for example, here I have two options here. And so with this Arts of 11 Pro, I'm gonna show you how I remove the original grip on this racket. And second one here, I've got a old train racket with its towel grip coming off. I'm just gonna show you how I normally take them off and prep them. Obviously, you simply pick them up, pull the old grip away, and that should be it. Oops, once you're done, voila. So you can obviously see that here I have black electrical tape on the handle of this train racket. And so generally I would advise treating your wooden handle with a layer of electrical tape to prevent, well, as best you can, as much moisture as you can away from the wooden handle. It's a precautionary measure and I would certainly advise you to try and keep as much moisture out of your wooden handles as you can, especially if you play in very humid conditions such as in Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia. So how do you remove a a racket's original grip. First, you remove the tape on here, and then literally go straight down to the wood. And so, but the thing is, I want to show you is you see these two staples here. So that's one here and the other one on the bottom. And this is why we needed the pliers earlier on. I generally remove these staples and pins because sometimes I grip my rackets quite hard and I can feel them and so they're not comfortable and they cut your fingers if you're not careful. So to so simply use your pliers, come from the top, pull and there we go, we're up. So that's one of them and a second one from the very top. These are the two staples. So once we've taken off all the original grip on the racket, we should actually see on Genuine Your Next Rackets the original barcode. So there's a barcode underneath the original grip, which is shown here. So the next step after removing all the original grip for me is to tape the wooden handle with electrical tape to prevent moisture from seeping in. So here I use a very simple roll of electrical tape. So generally I start on the base side so sometimes I will just cover that little area between the butt cap and the wood and then I try and pull it ever so slightly because electrical tape is a bit stretchy yeah you can pull it quite tightly and then I go try and go just as tight as possible across the whole racket and then I go all the way up to the cone you can see this line so I try and end on that line And voila. So you can either, with electrical tape, you can either just pull or cut them. And I'll, I'll just pull this time around. Boop. And there we go. So here you can actually feel, it's quite nice. And these are the ridges that I was talking about earlier on. So if you, you're someone like me who prefers to really feel the ridges and you will enjoy actually having a grip like this. So this, for example, is one of the rackets that I will be reviewing soon, and so it needs my usual grip on it. So this tape on the other side here is where your starting position supposedly is, and it stops the tape from slipping when you roll it around. However, I do it the other way around. So I completely open it, and then here you have your clean plastic section, which makes it, it's all tacky. I love it. And what I do is, I generally I do three loops at the bottom so one thumb holding it down and then with a little bit of tension roll it across so this is one so I just continue pulling that and I do three so two and three and then I start gently going down and we'll keep pulling that pulling that backing tape off 
Yes, those of you, if you if you're a neat freak with OCD, you will not you will not like this crease. I personally don't mind it because I do like some tension on it, and that's okay. And so what you do is you overlap it at the start. I generally go maybe about one third for now, and then I try and keep it slightly as consistent as I can as we go up to as we go up on the racket. So we remove that, we can remove the film completely. And so I, I often, if you need to hold it, just use your index finger or your thumb to hold it down. And I use gentle pressure. It's, I don't pull it very, very tight. Some of my friends do, um, I don't. So it's just little bits of gentle pressure. And then again, when we come to the cone section, just keep going as usual. Will be some creases, of course, and then you see this tape at the very end. Peel that out now, and then actually, instead of going up, tape it down so it tapes onto your grip. And there we go, and so there's no need for the finishing tape, and I generally. I like how my grips are like this. So for me, if I hold my racket on the bottom, yep, that extra heft, little bit of extra squidginess, it kind of automatically stops my hand from slipping any further downwards. Acts like a little barrier on that sense. Um, and then obviously I can then go quite far up when I'm serving. So if I'm serving, you know, so if I'm serving, I can actually hold it on to the cone, which then tells me that's the limit of the cone for me. So I really enjoy that. And so this is my current setup. Might not be the cleanest one in the world, but I think it does a good job. So here I have an example racket. This is from 100, which is a relatively young brand, but exciting. And this handle is a one piece directly with the cone and the shaft which is built into the shaft. However, it needs a grip as it doesn't have one. First thing you do, peel off the double sided tape backing. And then what I would do is I would attach it to the back of the butt cap, twist it and literally go onto the base handle of your racket. And so line it up. Don't worry about these section at the moment. We'll come back to that later on. And so what you want to do is follow the section of your grip that you've applied and slowly work your way up the racket. And also again, I always use my index finger and middle finger just to pull the backing off the tape and just take your time and gently roll your racket. And so I don't like having ridges on so there's no overlap. So they go literally as tight as possible together without having a gap or overlap and so we're now at the cone section and it's again your personal preference to go all the way up or not I generally finish about midway you can take your scissors and cut it here so it finishes along the racket that is not a very good cut and there we go and so what you do is literally again just wrap it around your racket and round it off. And once you're done, literally, I would do is what I grip it all around. And now let's go back to the base. And so quickly remove that little section and tidy it up. And so the very end, close it down. And voila. It's not very pretty, but that's how I do it. I would rough it up ever so slightly. Some people also use a pair of scissors to rough it up. I've seen that happening. So these are all little tips that you can actually take away. So let me show you how to apply something like this. So essentially what you do is pull, pull it out and you literally wrap it round. And it's certainly a personal preference of how much cushioning you like to have on your racket handle. So for example, here I have one layer, well, one and a half layer, and I'm gonna go down that little bit more 
for that extra cushioning. So I think this is, a, this is it for me. So what I do is literally tear that and that generally it sticks on itself. Yeah. So here you can already feel that gentle cushioning and squidginess from your racket handle directly. And then so from here on, you can then put your PU grip on or your towel grip on, which then gives you that little bit more give, a little bit more comfort in many ways. And you can always keep adding more on if you like. And so for example, if you don't like two layers, you can add another two more and just keep going. And once you're done, tear it off, squeeze on it. It should stick on itself that little bit enough for you to put your ultimate grip on and that should be pretty straightforward. Here we go, cushion wrap. So for our PU grip, we will use this orange Kralakal onto my train racket, which has the cushion wrap on already. This should be the starting end, but I don't start with this. This is my finishing end. Remove the backing, the tape, and then go straight onto the base of the racket. Again, I go quite a few loops. That's one, two, three loops, just in case. So there's a slightly higher risk with a PU grip because you have this backing, this uh, double-sided backing. And so if you made a mistake when you're removing it, you might actually tear off the sticky bits, which is supposed to provide you with lots of grip. And so maybe a wrap is a better option after all. And so once I've hit my three loops, I literally come down. Oh dear God. Oh wow, look at that. So it's took up some of the cushion wrap already. Okay, so using some portion of overlap. Some portion of overlap. Oh, the right end will be upside down. Again, try and have consistent level of overlap. Okay, so we can remove that. That can come in. And then just finish it off. There we go, tribal. So there you have it, multiple different types of grips, and hopefully this provides you with a little bit more knowledge of going into your Racket Pro shop and be able to test and choose the right grips for yourself. Always remember, it is down to personal preference, so you can always try new ones, like for me this, and see if you actually like it or not. In the meantime, I will see you in the next one.